Hi everyone, welcome back. So I realized that in the past couple months, maybe even a few months, I've been using the same products over and over again. And you know, it's like muscle memory. You, when you don't try anything new, you kind of repeat the same routine and you do it quickly. So I can do my makeup in like five minutes. But I do have a lot of makeup and I accumulated a lot of stuff. So I figured I'm gonna do a video on just products I don't use. And um, these are mostly new. And I'm actually trying out these two mascaras right here. This is the Glossier Lash Stick and this is the Milk Kush Mascara. I have one on each eye right now. Um, one's lengthening and one's volumizing. So that's not a surprise, but um, I wanna kind of compare these two throughout the day. I got a lot of comments on Instagram from people asking me what the difference between these two mascaras are and which one I prefer. And to be honest with you, I don't wear mascara every day and I can't remember the last time I wore mascara for a full day. So I decided to try each of them on each eye. I'm gonna test it out throughout the entire day to see how it goes and then get back to you at the end of the video. Yeah, so if you're interested in seeing this look, keep watching. I'm gonna start with the serum. This is from Onomi. It's the Powerful Priming Serum. Ooh, it's like a gel kind of. I think, oh yeah, it has a little bit of shimmer in it. I'm just gonna apply this all over. I just um, did a gentle microderm yesterday, so I feel like my skin's really absorbing every type of skincare that I put in it. It feels really good. Usually when I'm at home and I put on skincare, I kind of apply some to the back of my hand as well, or the residual to the back of my hand. And then also to let it absorb quickly, or to make it absorb quickly, I have a fan and I kind of fan myself. Um, oh, I meant to use this. I just got this, it's the Makeup Drop original glittery glitz or winter glitz it's a silicone beauty plier it's like a silly sponge essentially i'm gonna let the serum sink in a bit and then put on a this is the becca backlit priming filter and it has shimmer in it so i think i'm just gonna put this on the high points i've learned a secret where if you put on a liquid highlighter underneath and you put on foundation over it it has like a natural lit from within glow so i'm gonna try and do that. This is a bit more dense than um, most silly sponges that I've tried or silicone sponges that I've tried. I actually really like this. It's like the same texture as, I guess like a fingertip. It's not as soft as um, the other ones I've had in the past. This is actually great for applying skincare. So if you don't have a use for it when it comes to makeup, try applying it with your skincare because it works wonders. Yeah, so this does look like kind of like a highlight. Oof. Yeah, definitely highlighty. All right, so what I'm gonna do is just take the residual with this and kind of pinpoint it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this really picks up the pigment, which is nice. Yeah, so high points of my cheeks, brows. You can totally wear this on top of foundation as a natural looking highlight. I actually really like it as that. I don't think it's necessarily a, a primer. When it comes to foundation, I usually do something lighter, like, a, I don't know, like a skin tint or um, a BB cream, but I'm gonna use this Lancome makeup stick today, and the shade I have here is Bisque, 320 Bisque. And, oh, it's actually a lot creamier than I thought it would be. This is almost the perfect match, <laughs> look at that. Use this and blend it out. Yeah, this works really well for that. Nice. And it doesn't pick up any product really either. That's awesome. I thought this foundation was going to be like super full coverage, but it really isn't. So I'm going to add a second layer of skin on and then blend it out again. Maybe if you use like a, I don't know, a different brush. I usually use this brush right here. This is Sephora 47. It looks like a foundation brush that's been washed and then just like plopped down like this. It's a little bit curved and this works really well for foundation for me. But I like to use BB creams and serums and um, what do you call it? Skin tints, that kind of texture, so lighter foundations. So maybe that's why it works so well. But this actually works amazing for the stick foundation. So I'm really impressed. I would say the texture of this is cream to powder. All right, let's move on to concealer. So I have the Milk Makeup Flex Concealer in the shade Medium. I'm gonna put that, actually let me see. It's like this, it's super creamy. I'm gonna put that under my eyes. See how that looks. I'll try the whole triangle thing that everyone knows. I never do this at home, but 
Let's try it. Pick a point. Oh my god, that blends super quickly. I'm gonna put on some concealer, and this is Yves Saint Laurent All Hours Concealer in the shade 40 PB3. And you know what? I need this right in the center because it's a lighter shade. Maybe at the tip of my nose too. Brighten it up a little bit. Yeah, I think this is actually too light for me, but the formula is super creamy, so ideally I think this would be better as an under eye brightener, and this would be good for um, like blemishes, discoloration, that kind of stuff. I can hardly recognize myself right now. I never conceal my under eyes, so I feel like my eyes look a little bit small. Um, I'm going to put some more concealer around my mouth since I have some discoloration right here around my nose as well. And down here, it's really not streaky, which is nice. So usually I'm like blending like crazy and it's really, I mean, it looks really good. I'm really impressed. All right, I'm going to go ahead and set everything with or set my under eyes with the Laura Mercier with the Secret Brightening Powder for under eyes. And the brush I'm using is from e.l.f. It's a small tapered brush. This is the best kept secret, I feel like, because it's, I think it's like $3, and it's just the perfect little taper. It's meant for, I think it's meant for highlighting, but it fits so perfectly in your under eye. I really like it for powdering off because I don't like to powder my entire face. So this is pretty perfect just to hit certain spots. I'm going to powder the rest of my face with this Givenchy Prism Libre powder. It's got four colors, as you can see. And I don't really understand the purpose of it because I have to blend it in all together anyway. It smells really good though. So I'm just going to powder my T-zone. I'm going to use a highlight brush. This is from Laura Mercier and using the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector pressed in the color Opal. This has a cult following and I've never tried it before so I'm really excited. I feel like there's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve so. Is that still a thing? Is highlight still a thing? Do people go crazy over it or is it more of like a natural highlight that's in right now? I feel like natural's always in but do you remember when everyone was kind of like strobing like during the holidays? That looks really nice. I mean, for events. I just don't want to go out in the sun in broad daylight and be gleaming, you know what I mean? So, I mean, this is good for nighttime, I feel like. A little bit dumb. My nose. Add some dimension. Um, speaking of dimension, I'm gonna put on some bronzer. This is from Make, it's the new bronzer. It's called the Bronzing Brick. And this shade is called Marfa. It's named after like art cities, so this is really cute. So this is what it looks like. I actually have Taos, which is, um, it reminds me of Georgia O'Keeffe, but this is Taos right here, which I've been using as an eyeshadow, which is not what it's meant to be used as. This is the darker shade that they have, and this is like their medium shade right here. Medium, dark. Bronzing brush. So this is also from Laura Mercier. It's a bronzing brush. I don't wear bronzer every day, so this is going to be a little bit of a learning curve for me. Whoa. Alright, I really have to blend it out. Alright, hairline. I'm gonna do the three motion, so like that. I'm gonna put a little bit on my lids. You see the difference? It's insane. Sculpted. See, I don't wear a full face of foundation every day, so I feel like there's usually some dimension on my face because you can see where the sun hits and where it tans. But if you were to wear a full face of foundation, it flattens out everything, so you would have to highlight and you would have to bronze, right? To add um, depth or dimension. So, now I get it. I finally get it. For blush, I'm gonna use the Luminous Blush in Snapdragon by Becca. Wow, look at that, it's like a vivid pink. This is always so satisfying, taking off the plastic. And let's find a blush brush. So I'm using this kit that Laura Mercier sent me in a PR package and I'm super stoked on it. And a lot of um, influencers got this and a lot of people were saying that they don't use brushes at all. But I was, I feel like I was the only person who was like super stoked on it because I use brushes on everything. 
and yeah, I was really excited. So um, yeah, I've been using this every day and I, I absolutely love it. I feel like an artist whenever I carry this around. And the great thing is that it actually zips off too. So if you were to pack this with you, you don't have to carry the entire case. And it actually comes with these two little like pull out bags. So you can bring other things like, a, like this thing or foundation brushes because this kit doesn't have like a legitimate liquid foundation brush. This is the cheek color brush and they also have a cream one too which I've been using a lot so I'm gonna dip into this real quick. It reminds me of like NARS orgasm. I feel like I need to blend this all out a little bit, so I'm gonna use a blending brush. What is this? Yeah, blending brush, perfect. I don't have a new brow product, so I'm using the Anastasia Granite Brow Powder Duo. It looks like this, it's pretty beat. Um, I'm gonna use, what brush? This angled brush right here and a spoolie. So comb everything up. This is the Brow Definer brush. I'm going to use the more gray tone. Look at that difference. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. Just blend everything out. Alright, this is the Tinted Brow Gel from Ico. I really like the squeezy tube because you can squeeze out the very last drop. Just nice. Um, oh, very nice. Ooh, a little bit too liquidy right there. Okay. I need to take the front and just kind of comb it up or back comb it a little bit like that. So it's like vicious. Um, it never stays up for whatever reason. This eye just flattens back out again, always. So the secret is to leave it, let it dry, and then come back to it. I have some shadow insurance that I need to apply because I have some eyeshadows here. So let's squeeze out some shadow insurance. This is from Too Faced, Too Faced Shadow Insurance, obviously. Cult classic. Um, apply that. Let's line the eyes with a Cole Power eye pencil from MAC. And this is in Feline. Hmm, Feline. Nice. Feline. I get it. Line. Okay. I'm just going to do like the waterline on the inside. What do you call this? Tight lining? So, yeah. It's very subtle, you can't really tell it's there, but the whole point is that it kind of defines your upper lash line a little bit, so it makes your lashes look more thick than they are. Um, for eyeshadow, I have two palettes here that I want to try out. This is from e.l.f. This is the Nude Rose Gold. And it looks like this. It's a little bit purpley, pinkish purpley. And then... I have this one from MAC. This is the Semi Sweet Times 9 eyeshadow palette. And this is awesome because it's all matte shades. And I feel like you can use these colors or some of these colors as brow colors. I think it'd be a really good base. When I ordered this, I thought that it would be like a giant, um, what do you call it? Like a giant palette, you know? Uh, and then when it came, it was like nice and small. And then I figured this would be perfect for traveling. So yeah, I'm really stoked on this. I'm gonna use a large eyeshadow brush and in the center shade right here. I'm just gonna stamp it on my entire eye. Mm -hmm. Alright, so already this eyeliner is kind of bumming me out because it's smudging, so this is not something I would repurchase. So I'm gonna take a smudge brush. This is, yeah, the smudge brush from Laura Mercier. Back into that shade. I'm just gonna do around three quarters of the bottom out. This is the finishing ponytail. Just blend everything out. Which one would work well? Let's see. Let's start with this one, see how that looks. No, it's not quite right. We gotta do this one. Damn. Makes my brows look like it's like a million miles high. Check that out. That's insane. Wow, I feel like a new person. I'm gonna take that same color and put it on the inner corner of my eye too. Using the same smudge brush that I used earlier, I'm going to use this dark shade right here and kind of just stamp it on the outer part of my eyes, kind of making 
a soft wing. I'm gonna go into the shimmery eye palette from e.l.f. Um, let's see how many shades. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten shades, that's not bad. I'm gonna go in with this color. I'm seeing this one actually. Yeah, I like that. Put that in the center. And just tap it in. I'm gonna be a little bit extra and take the eyeshadow brush and go into the Becca Opal Skin Perfector. Hit my brows with it real quick. Jesus, it's insane. Super sharp. See, I would totally use highlight and bronzer as eyeshadow because, I mean, it works so well. And you can kind of minimize all the amount of um, makeup you need or you want, you don't really need it. Oh, I have these liquid eyeliners that are really cool. And this is from Nude Sticks and they're pretty new. And I have, what shade do we have here? We got Golden Rosé and Bronze Patina. This is what it looks like. And then it just applies super easily. So if you're learning how to apply eyeliner for the first time or liquid eyeliner for the first time, I feel like this would be a great tool to have. And this is Bronze Patina. Oh, huh, very nice. I like the grip on this too. I feel like you can really get a firm grip on it. I really want to use Golden Rosé, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the inner part of my eye with it and try it out. Whoa, it's really highlighty. Jeez. This is really cool. It dries super quickly too, so I'm just going to do a little demonstration on the back of my hand. As you can see, clean hands, and then let it dry, and then I'll smudge it, and then you can see how well it works. Moving on to lips. This is the MAC Prep and Prime, I guess, lip conditioner, lip primer. Cool. This is the Retro Matte Liquid Lipstick, or lip color, and it's topped with brandy. I had this um, matte liquid lipstick in like a bright red color before. Let's see what the color looks like. Yeah, it's a very madeline color. Yeah, no, this isn't my color. This is too purpley for me. I'm just gonna apply it all the way and then you can see what it looks like, but I can already tell this isn't gonna be for me. I thought it was gonna be a bit more pink than this. This is really gray and it's really drying up my lips and it's really sinking into the cracks too, as you can see. God, this is not a good look on me. I feel like this would be great if you were like a film noir um, actress, but on me, it's just not right. So I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna take a little bit more of this bronze patina and kind of just do like a little bit on the outer part of my eye right here. I really like how it looks up here, so I really wanna try it. So on my hands, it's completely dry. Just the eyeliner. Isn't that awesome? I have these. These are from Laura Mercier and they are the Velour Extreme Matte Lipstick. The cool thing is that it has a sharpener on one end so you can use it as a lip liner as well. I'm just gonna go for the red because it's a classic. I feel like I don't even know how to apply lipstick anymore. I'm gonna use a lip brush to kind of just even everything out. I think I'm gonna top it off with a little bit of this pink. Oh, whoa. Uh... Okay, so there's this lipstick color that I really like from NARS. Um, it's called Funny Face. In like 2011 or maybe 2012, I bought it and I just fell in love with it because J. Cree's in a catalog and I don't know, it was just such a pretty color. This kind of reminds me of that. They also had another one, I think it was called um, Shep, like Shepparelli, and it's the same color. Oh, you know what? It'd be more like Shepparelli or Shep because this is matte. Um, Funny Face has a little bit of like a, like an opalescent finish to it, so, um, which is the one that I had and I really liked it and I felt like it looked good on everyone. I really like these two together, it reminds me of Chaparelli, so, or Shep, Shep, and he stopped saying Chaparelli. Shep is the color from NARS. The color that I bought was called Funny Face and, um, 
I really like that color. Moving on to the thing that I'm the most excited about. These two mascaras. So this one's from Milk Makeup. This is the Kush Mascara. It's got CBD oil in it. It's funny because Caitlin and I were just talking about CBD oil today because I have a crippling amount of anxiety and she said, well, why don't you try CBD oil? And I don't even smoke weed, so um, she said it's not the same thing. There's uh, THC, something about that. Put it together and it's, um, I really don't know because I kind of like the zone deck. But she mentioned CBD oil and the first thing that I thought of was this mascara because it's got CBD oil in it and it's supposed to condition your lashes. This is insane, it's super heavy. I feel like if you carried this in your pocket and you were walking around in a sketchy neighborhood, you can use this as a weapon. It's super heavy. Um, let's take a look at the brush. It's a huge brush. That's insane. Usually I'm not a mascara person. I don't wear mascara every day. My favorite mascara of all time is one from CoverGirl. I believe they stopped making it because I stopped wearing mascara for a while, so I haven't bought it in a while. But it's a skinny yellow tube. It's kind of like their Lash Blast mascara with the orange tube, but it's yellow and it's super skinny and it only lengthens. It doesn't uh, thicken at all. So um, that was my favorite mascara of all time. And of course, we have the Glossier Lash Stick, which is a film form of mascara. This is the two side by side. This doesn't feel as nice in your hands. It's not as weighty, but it does have a rubber applicator tip. And this is what I'm a little bit more comfortable with because this is almost exactly like the Lash Blast from CoverGirl that I used to use, the yellow one. Um, let's just try it. I'll do two coats of both so you can see. Whoa, it really combs out everything. Wow, magic. And it's supposed to be like a water resistant formula too. This really does not clump. I really like this. Sweet. Can you see the difference? I feel like if I look up, you might be able to see it a little bit better. Upon first application, I really like this so far. It lengthens my lashes. This is just one coat. And there's no clumping, it's not a wet formula, so my eyelashes aren't really dropping or anything, so that's usually what I look for in a mascara. And this one, that's insane. That's a lot of mascara juice. What do you call that, mascara juice? <laughs> mascara? Mascara cream? The, not the brush, but like the actual formula. There's a lot on this brush. All right, let's go for it. It looks like there's little fibers in this too. Okay, so already I can tell that this is very different. Yeah, so this formula is a bit more wet. I used this once before, but only for, like I did it right before I went to bed and um, removed it right away because I don't usually wear mascara during the day. So I'm excited to test this out side by side. So this is super volumizing. It is a bit clumpy. And the brush is a little bit hard to control, but if you're into volumizing mascaras, I feel like this one would be for you. If you're into natural looking lengthening, lengthening this one would be for you. But if you're going to go all out, then I would go with Kush. Looking up, side by side comparison. So this side's lengthening and this side's volumizing. Alright, second layer, here we go. This is the second hit of Kush. All right, I'm gonna give it a good five minutes or so to dry and then I'm gonna recurl my lashes. I know you're not supposed to do that, but I kinda wanna show the full effect. So um, yeah, BRB. So it's been like five minutes, but you wouldn't know that because you're on YouTube. But um, I recurled my lashes and immediately, this one, the one with um, the Glossier Lash Stick, it curled nicely and it's not clumpy, it still looks feathery. This one kinda flattened back out again, so I think I'm gonna try it one more time. Right. Yeah. So you can see the difference. I think I like both mascaras with just one coat better. Um, this is, I mean, I don't really normally wear mascara on an everyday basis. I just curl my lashes. I mean, everyone's different. Some people like a more lengthening mascara. Some people like more volumizing and they don't really care about length. Some people don't wear mascara at all. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to try this out for a little bit and then get back to you. All right. So it's the end of the night. Let's see what time it is. It is 20.30, which is 8 o'clock. I filmed around 1 o'clock. So it's been a good seven-ish hours. My lipstick is still on. I haven't reapplied it either, and I've had two meals. And Khan just made a really spicy pasta dish, and it's still there. So lipstick is a 10 out of 10. My foundation is 
I'm, I really need a blot because it's greasy as fuck. But let's see. So it's been an emotional day, <laughs> a very emotional day. Khan was there to see it. And um, yeah, tears were shed and the mascara looks pretty good on both ends actually. So let's see, I have Kush from Milk Makeup on this side and I have Lash Slick from Glossy on this side. And this is $24. And this is $16. This feels like a $40 mascara when you hold it, the weight and everything. But I will say that the applicator isn't my cup of tea. And um, to be honest with you, I don't wear mascara every day. I think most of you already know that. So for someone like me, if I were to wear mascara, then if I had to wear it every day, then I would wear this because it's just an easier application. I feel like one coat is perfect for a natural looking, fluttery, feather like lash like a very natural like going to the gym everyday kind of makeup look um and it's water resistant too there's no smudging or anything like that and i also think though that um because my eyelids are so greasy and i applied the shadow insurance on top the grease didn't poke through and like didn't seep into my lashes and everything so um that really helps and that was a trick that i learned from my sister so um definitely if i were to wear mascara then i would wear uh, a shadow insurance or some sort of primer underneath. That said, I would totally go for this one over these two. I noticed that the curl stayed longer on this side. I think it's because the formula is water resistant. Um, on this side, because tears were shed, it's kind of flattened out a little bit even though it is a bit more curly. On, on video and in photos, I sent a photo to Caitlin. She said that she prefers this side. Um, which is the milk makeup side. So it really depends on what you want in a mascara. So if you want something that is volumizing, go for this one. I think most people want volumizing if they're gonna go for mascara. But for someone like me who doesn't wear mascara every day, who likes a natural look, go for this one. Both vegan, which is awesome. That's, that's kind of groundbreaking that they're both vegan. Um, this has CBD oil. I mean, you're not gonna get high from it or anything. So I think that's just kind of a gimmick. The packaging is so beautiful in this. It's, very weighty. Totally gonna use both. I would wear this to like an event and apply primer underneath. I would wear this every day and I probably wouldn't even worry about applying a primer underneath because it's a water resistant formula. Thank you so much for watching me experiment with makeup. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. I never say that. Why do I, why did I just say that? Yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.